This video demonstrates a sensory procedure for assessing wines for smoke characters. In many cases, the wines will be from small lot fermentations made to assess the impact of smoke exposure. The results of the sensory assessment help producers make decisions about whether or not to harvest their vineyard. It can also be used to assess wines after vintage. The procedure has been developed by the AWRI based on the principle of sensory best practices and adapted for use by trained tasters within a region that is dealing with a smoke event. This video is complemented by a detailed written method available on the AWRI website. Where can you set up the tasting? You don't need a sensory laboratory like this one. Choose a room somewhere that is quiet, has a constant room temperature, uniform lighting, and is clean and free from any others. Some regions have used a winery tasting lab, a cellar door, an office area, or a meeting room like this one. So, what equipment do you need? You need tables or benches, tasting glasses, a whiteboard marker, a shot glass, drinking water, spittoons or milkshake containers, tablets or smartphones, or a paper form and pens, gloves, and of course, the tasters. For statistical rigor, you need at least eight tasters selected primarily based on their ability to detect smoke compounds, with other requirements listed in the method. The tasters should not eat or drink, including coffee, for at least 30 minutes before the test. When setting up the tasting, the wine should be poured out of the sight of the judges so they are not influenced by the bottles, as the tastings are conducted under blind conditions. Arrange tables so that judges face away from each other and do not influence each other. The tasting should be done in silence. The AWRI can provide sensory software for use by smoke panels, which makes data collection very easy. You simply email a web link for the test to each judge, who then accesses the software on their tablet or smartphone. An alternative is for judges to write answers on a ballot paper. How do you set up the samples for each test? Assign each wine a unique three-digit code and write it on the bottle. You can use the University of Oregon's code generator to generate the codes. Write the three-digit code for each wine on a row of glasses using a whiteboard marker, which will easily wash off. In this case, there are 10 judges, so I need 10 glasses of each wine. Make sure the wine bottles on the bench align with the corresponding row of coded glasses. Now, pour the wines. Use a 30ml shot glass to pour a constant volume for all samples. All wines should be at the same temperature ideally around 20 to 22 degrees Celsius. Pre-pull wine early if they came from cool storage to allow them to reach room temperature. This usually takes at least 20 minutes. Place one glass of each wine onto a tray or on the bench where each taster will be. Each judge should have the glasses arranged in a different order. You can either advise judges to shuffle their samples randomly or the person setting up does this. I am using trays here to serve wines to judges in different orders. A negative control should be included in each set. This is a clean, no smoke affected wine, preferably the same variety as the samples being tested. For example, if tasting six white wines, followed by a set of three red wines, each set should have an appropriate control. A clean control, small-scale ferment wine is preferred, but a wine from a previous vintage can also be used. Where possible, a positive control or non-smoke-affected sample should also be included on a regular basis to check that judges are still able to detect smoke characters. At least one sample should be duplicated in each set to assess judges' repeatability over time. Assess white wines before red wines and ideally try and organize tastings into groups of similar varieties or styles. Avoid sensory fatigue by having a maximum of 10 samples per tasting session and a maximum of 20 samples per hour. This includes the controls and duplicates. A break of at least 
10 minutes should follow each set. Judges also need a forced two minute break between each sample and should rinse their mouths with water to minimize any carryover effects of smoke flavors. Using the software or paper ballots, the judges rate fruit, smoke and other characters in wines on a line scale from low to high. Judges should be asked to concentrate, be honest with themselves, not being too critical and not gravitate to the middle of the scale. They should also be reminded that clean control wines are included and scores of zero for smoke should be expected. So what do the results look like? If you're using the sensor software, the results screen show frequency charts and mean values given by each taster. You then compare the mean of each test wine with the mean of the control sample. The analysis of variance will tell you if they are statistically different from each other. You can also export the results from the software into a spreadsheet. The AWRI can assist with data interpretation. Sensory results should be cross-checked with chemical data from the same grapes when available. Performance of judges should be monitored after each test. Details of how to do this are included in the sensory method. If a judge consistently performs poorly, they should be asked to reconsider their participation on the panel or provided with additional training. These tastings can be hard work for judges, so it's important to encourage and acknowledge their efforts, provide performance feedback to judges constructively, and keep individual results confidential. Data from judges performing poorly can potentially be excluded from the session, so long as the panel size does not drop below eight. The AWRI is here to support regions and companies that wish to set up a smoke tasting panel. Please refer to the method for more details and don't hesitate to contact the AWRI help desk for assistance.